I'm Dr. Natalie Marks, and we're here with a quick cup of knowledge. Joining me today is Tasha McNerney. She's a licensed veterinary technician, as well as she's specializing in anesthesia and pain management, and also is the creator of the Facebook group, Veterinary Anesthesia Nerds. Thank you so much for joining us Thank today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're, you're a very inspiring person in the profession. Oh, I think yeah. <laughs> you, you are you. for a, a lot of people. Thank because you. I think you're, as I mentioned, you're the epitome of really starting you know, square one and working your way up and continuing to evolve yourself and create yourself into different areas of passion. And as I was saying, a lot of technicians, I think, in the industry right now feel they're being underutilized or they're stifled or yes. plateaued. What were some of the steps that you took to start doing some of these things to elevate yourself in the profession? Um, I mean, I'll agree with you. I, I, I bet that probably most of the technicians who are feeling that way are actually being underutilized. Um, I think what I did is that I really had the luck of having a great practice and a great practice owner. And I think that unfortunately, if you really are being underutilized, you have to have that conversation with your practice owner um, or your head veterinarian or you know, medical director and say, I want to do more. I, like I said, I got really lucky. My medical director was a veterinarian who really wanted to utilize technicians to their fullest. We had one technician who was interested in dentistry. He said, go out and get whatever you need. We'll specialize you in dentistry. I was interested in anesthesia. I mean, within a month, he had bought me all the textbooks I needed. He got a ventilator. Wow. He just said, whatever your passion is, I want to do that. And I think you have to have a practice that is willing to really let you go and pursue those goals. Now, some of it you're going to do on your own, on your own time. I mean, there was many nights I was up till midnight. I was reading. I was doing case reports. I was learning on my own time. But you have to have a practice that supports you. So you really have to find a good practice. Right. So and sounds like <laughs> mentorship is yeah, essential. Yeah, you do right? have to also find mentorship. And um, I didn't necessarily get that at my practice because at my practice we didn't have an anesthesiologist. But I reached out to some people on uh, uh, Facebook. I reached out to some people via, you know, just texting and going back and forth and talking about different cases and getting recommendations. Of, you know, what book did you find the most helpful? Or, or I have this case today. What's going on with it? And that's kind of how Anesthesia Nerds was really born, was that I had a couple of anesthesiologists that I was constantly texting back and forth going over cases with. And I said, you know what, this would be easier if we were all just on a group on Facebook. So let's just, let's just be a group. And so it was like 10 of us that I started. And then somebody said, can I invite my technician to be a part of this group? Can I invite my friend to be a part of this group? And so you know, now we have almost 35,000 people Thank around you. the world talking about nothing but anesthesia pain management um, you know, on a Facebook group, but again, it's we're we're creating a space where you can go in and ask a question. If you have a difficult case, or or just there's another subject you want more training in, and, and what are some resources, and you can bounce ideas off of other technicians and doctors. I mean, we have a lot of anesthesiologists on the page too, so right. there's all levels, all, and that's what I love. There's all levels working together to elevate the standard of care, and that's really why I got into this field. Right, like I got into this field because I want to make animals feel better. I want to alleviate their pain as much as I can. But I also want to bring up that standard of care. I, I want to talk to other technicians and say, what are you doing at your clinic? Maybe I can help you get to a higher level. Or you know, maybe you could teach me something. And that, also, I think that's why I've had longevity, is because I feel like I'm constantly learning new things. And I want my brain to be active. You know, None of us just want to stand there and hold an animal and drop vaccines. No. None of us. It's mind numbing and you know, we want our brains to be engaged. We want to be utilized. We want to find that practice that's going to say, what are you passionate about and how can we support you? That's wonderful. And you're reaching people, I think, which is really nice, in a, a very safe community, right? Where, where yes, which is surprising for Facebook because, you know, um, just online can be very difficult for people to say, hey, I, I don't know something. You know, it's hard to right. say I don't know something and not feel like you're going to be ridiculed or torn down. And we try really hard, the other administrators and I, I have two other administrators, Steven Sital, Darcy Palmer, both VTSs, both fantastic. They help police the page for me. They help to make sure that everyone is civil and everyone's getting their questions answered. We get in, that it's a safe space, that there are people there that are just beginning and they don't understand what these acronyms mean. They don't understand. So that's our job, to help the next generation do better, learn better, and elevate that standard of care. 
And you're even having a conference. Yeah, it we, like. actually, it's in our fourth year this That's year. Awesome. Uh, so we're in our fourth year for the Veterinary Anesthesia Nerd Symposium. It will be at the Oquendo Center, so right down the road here, and it's fantastic. It's two days of nothing but anesthesia and pain management. This year, we're actually adding a third day of wet labs, so hands-on experience with all the regional nerve blocks, local blocks, so they can take that back to their practice and elevate their pain management. Um, and it's, again, just for anesthesia nerds, so people who just want to do anesthesia pain management, that's all we talk about for two days straight. So for me, it's pretty fantastic. I, I would be there. <laughs> yeah. I'm joining. And we have happy hours. Oh, so. even better. Yeah. Even better. It's Vegas, right? Yeah. It's Vegas. So it sounds like these are great resources, not just for techs that are in a multi-doctor or multi-practice setting, but especially for the technician that might be in a sole practice, right, yeah. on their own or feeling alienated or just doesn't feel like there's that local community for them to reach out to. So, um, but all of them, and including veterinarians like our, myself, we are all struggling, I think, at times with compassion fatigue, oh, right? yeah. Burnout, yeah. Um, a lot of the well-being and wellness struggles, I think, in the industry. You've got a lot on your plate, it sounds yeah. like, right? But it sounds like some of that fuels you. But yeah. for the techs that are listening that m might feel like, gosh, I, I don't know how she's got it all together. You know, well, I don't. I don't. Well, I think that's important <laughs> to say, right? This I is mean, an illusion. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I, think it's I don't have it all say. together. Absolutely not. Um, you know, because I'm the same way. But I, I think it's important for people to understand that it it does take a village, right? Yeah, it, it does. It does take time and, and people around you for support. But is there maybe one tip that you use throughout your day that helps you get through in a more positive or less stressful way? Do you, do you have any things that work for you to help you either settle or ground yourself or um, when you're having a struggle or feeling like you're really not getting the case the way you want it or the, you know, a, a strategy the way you want it? Is there any technique that helps you? Um, I mean, I think that I can say the cliched things like, you know, go do some yoga and listen to a meditation podcast. And that's all well and good. Uh, and I do those things. But the truth is that, yeah, between the conferences and the anesthesia nerds and the full-time job that I have, oh, and the child that I have, and oh, by the way, I'm planning a wedding. So, yeah, there are days that I, there are days I, I may cry in the shower. I'm not going to lie. Um, and I do all of those things. But I think that what really keeps me going and has not sent me screaming towards another job that pays more and I don't get peed on, is that I really do love it and I see the difference in the patients. And I think that if you, have a, if you can take a moment, it sounds simple and silly, to remove yourself from a situation and just find a cute patient that you can just zen out with and breathe, even if it's like 60 seconds, if you can just focus on that and get rid of everything that's going on, which I know sounds really hard to do, but that's honestly, that's what I do. I had a little French bulldog this last week. She recovered so well from her thoracotomy. And the next day we had a really, really difficult case, really difficult euthanasia. And I took myself, I went over to her recovery cage and I kind of spent some seconds with her and focused on her and kind of reset myself because the thing is, this job is hard, and mm -hmm. it will drain you, so you have to reset yourself in healthy ways. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, thank you for all that you've done for the profession. I think, like I said, you're uh, incredibly inspiring, and you're reaching great. so many people and ele so. elevating them and the standards of care. So we thank you, and um, best of luck at the conference and with your conference ahead in October. Great. Thanks so much for having me.